I don't think many people understand the cash flow quadrant or even think about the cash flow quadrant or some people may not even heard of it. So Robert Kiyosaki, right, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, I guess he's the creator or is credited with coming up with the cash flow quadrant. And so when you look at what the cash flow quadrant is, it's basically four quadrants that you can make income in, right? So quadrant number one, the E, that's what most people are gonna be familiar with, the employee. The second side of the left side of the cash flow quadrant is gonna be self-employed. So you're still an employee. Uh, we like to say these people own their job, right? So these are tradesmen, these are, you know, the gutter guy, the roofer guy, the lawnmower guy, like, he doesn't report to anybody, but like if he stops cutting grass, he doesn't um, make money. I remember when I used to work in the cell phone industry, I would go to some of these smaller mom and pop cell phone stores and the guy working behind the uh, counter was also the owner. And so what happens is I'm like, how, you know, you're here 12 hours a day, open the clothes. And I realized like they didn't really own the business, they owned the job. Like it was their job, they owned it, they, didn't, they couldn't get fired from their own job but it wasn't a business because they didn't make money when they weren't there. So that leads me to this side of the quadrant. Now, first of all, this is the side where wealth is created on the business and the investor side. So the business owner side, it, you, you own a business or you own a system, right? That produces income with or without you or with very little of your input. And then you got the I quadrant, which is the investor quadrant where your money is making money for you. And so these two quadrants is where the wealth is created, primarily uh, in the I quadrant. So the B and the I quadrant, because these people take the income that they make from their business, and then a lot of times they shuffle it down to the I quadrant, and then their money just makes more money, which is where, you know, typically the term, the rich get richer, the wealthier it gets wealthy come from. And most people get upset at that, but it's nothing to be upset about. It's more about what quadrant are you working in? So let's talk about the E quadrant first of all. This is where most people build their house. This is where most, most people stick their stake in the sand and plant their flag. But I don't think they really are analyzing what they're planting their flag on. So we think about the employee, right? Uh, some of the pros is you work for pay. So why is that a pro or why is that a you know good? It's like, I know if I put in one hour, I'm going to get my hourly rate uh, or, or my salary or whatever the case is. Like, you know, for sure, like I worked eight hours, they gonna pay me for eight hours. So for some people that consistency is uh, what gives them comfort, right? These people wouldn't make it as a real estate agent or something like that. Cause they're like, oh, I don't know where my next deal is going to come from, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, they wouldn't necessarily make it down here in the self-employed quadrant, uh, but they like putting in work. But here's the problem with that. If you don't work, you don't get paid. Now, to some people, they think like, well, that's normal, <laughs> right? But to a business owner, that's not normal, right? So if we're both employees and we're like, we don't work, we don't get paid today, man. We're like, yeah, that's how it goes. But that makes no sense to this guy because he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm all about building systems that work for me even if I don't work so I can still get paid. And then this guy as well is like, well, that doesn't make sense to me either because whether I work or not, my money continues to work for me. So that's one of the reasons why wealth is built in these quadrants. And so in the employee quadrant, the other thing that's exciting is get a consistent check. I know every two weeks, I'm gonna get a check from an employer, you know, every two weeks. But the problem with that is, it's limited income. So you don't have the ability to say, I wanna make $10,000 this week as an employee. You don't even have that ability. And because you don't have the ability to say, I wanna make 10,000, I wanna make 20,000, I wanna make 100,000 this week or month or year, what typically happens is these people stop dreaming. So these people don't dream about the dream house. They don't dream about the dream car because they've already projected. They've already become conditioned. I know every two weeks I get $50,000 divided by 12 and minus taxes. So I know every week I'm going to get whatever that number is. And so that number does not equate to Bentley. That number does not equate to Mercedes Benz. 
that number does not equate to a house in the hills or in California or living on a lake or whatever it is, that number doesn't equate to private school. So you, these people, because of this, what inevitably is a pro, conditions your mind that I'll never have any of the things that other people have or that I might want. Now people, some people are gonna say, oh, I don't want a bigger car, I don't want a bigger house. Like, nobody wakes up and says like, what's your dream car? Like, I want the Ford Focus. Like nobody wakes up and says that. So don't don't even give me that, oh, uh, I don't want a better car. I don't want to live in a better neighborhood. It's not about that. Like, do you want to give more money uh, to your church? Would you like to write a $100,000 check for the daycare program at your church? Would you like to write a $50,000 check for clean water in Kenya or some, some type of thing that your church is doing? So it's not just about buying physical things. The reality is, could you do more with the money, whether that's donating to churches, charity, helping the family member out, getting a car, getting a house? Because sometimes people like poo-poo people who want like um, a fancy car or a fancy house, but what's wrong with that? If they build it, why not? They make them, why can't we buy them, right? And so whether you want to donate it, give it away, help somebody, the point is when you used to this consistent check, when they pass the collection plate around, you know I'm only giving 10%. I'm not going above 10. I'm not, you know, this is it. This is all I have, right? And so the problem with that, you got the limited income, which means you have limited impact. And that's the sad part, is that you could have a bigger impact, but you're choosing to play it small and play safe. Now, this is not to say go quit your job or the fast jobs. What I'm trying to share with people is that if they got one foot, they got one foot in this door on the E quadrant because they need to get a consistent paycheck. They need to take care of their family, right? They might need benefits. So you got one foot in that door. What I'm proposing is you have to find out how to get a, a foot into this door. And that's where most people are making the mistake. Most people got both feet planted right here. And so the problem with that is, right? You don't work, you don't get paid. So that's the problem, we already talked about that. Limited income, you don't have the ability to say, I wanna make an extra $50,000 this year. You tell an employee that and it's just unconceivable. I ain't talking about the people who say, well, what if I go back to school? Like, get out of here, we ain't talking about that. You know what I'm talking about. Like, you just can't wake up and decide, oh, all right, I'm gonna make extra 10 grand unless you're in commission sales. And even then you kind of got a little bit of a cap, right? So then you, your linear income, which means you work, you get paid. You work, you get paid. So you're trading time for dollars. So the other problem that happens in this quadrant is these are the people that's like, I don't get to go to the soccer games. I'm not at home with my kid. I got to drop them off at daycare. Um, typically the marriages are worse here because the parents are passing each other, right? Here, you take the kids, I gotta go to work now. All right, you off work, I got the kids. Okay, now we just fall out and go to sleep. We don't even have time to talk to each other, typically, right? And so all of that's happening in the E quadrant and that's because of the linear income. You're trading time for dollars, okay? And now that's not a bad thing short term. We gotta do what we gotta do. But when you got both feet planted in here, you don't even have the opportunity for unlimited earning potential, right? So no leverage. The other thing is you can't go to your spouse and say, hey, I'm feeling sick today. How about you go in and work for me? Or let's make, let's get the work done twice as fast so I can go home early. So I'm gonna bring my wife or spouse with me to work. We go bang this out and then I'm gonna take off uh, at noon today. <laughs> like, that just doesn't happen, which means you have no leverage. It's just you contributing to the income. And what's sad about that, because what just happened what recently with, with, with GM, they just cut something like 20,000 20, jobs. And then here in Michigan, where we're at, I think two of the plants are right here in Michigan. I know one is in uh, Hamtramck. I'm not sure where the other one's at. Uh, but two of the plants are here. One is in Ohio. I thought one was in Canada as well. But the point is, right? no leverage, linear income, they just cut your lifeline just like that. So they just told these people, we closed in the factory and uh, appreciate all the hard work. And so what happens is now these people are struggling, or well, they will be, 
they're going to be scrambling to try to find another job, but they're going right back into this system. But what if they had one foot into this system where they have money working for them? They said, it's okay. It's okay that I'm not, uh, that they close our plan and we're not making money because guess what? I got my money making money for me, right? And then no ability to leave a legacy. That's another problem with the E quadrant. When you think about legacy, you think about passing something on, whether that's knowledge, it's not always money, but can you pass on some knowledge to leave a legacy so that you can teach your kids, your grandkids, some type of trade or skill or information that the generations after you can benefit from. But when you think about the E quadrant, there's typically nothing to pass on. If you worked on the assembly line, you don't get to bring your kid in and he gets your job uh, when you pass away on the assembly line, right? There's nothing uh, that you pass down when you work in the E quadrant. And so when I hear people say, I want to leave a legacy, I want to drive the fancier car, I want to live in this neighborhood, I want to get out of debt faster, then I say, okay, well, when are you going to start learning how to invest? Oh, uh, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm scared or I'm going to learn someday. Like, I would not have time for this. I would be more scared when both of your feet are planted in this quadrant because there's, I just spelled out, there's no way for you to get the things that you say you want, unless you don't want those things. You say, I don't care about leaving a legacy. Okay. Then say it out loud. Go look in the mirror and say, hey, I don't care about leaving a legacy. I don't care about leaving any knowledge, money, wealth, anything to my family or kids after I'm gone, right? There's some people like that. I hope that's not you, right? Uh, but the reality is most people want to leave something behind and then most people don't want to wake up afraid every day that they'll never be able to contribute. Um, and I'm talking financially. There's other ways to contribute with your time, with your love, um, with what you do have, right? But I'm talking about when you say, I want to write a check to the Boys and Girls Club. I want to, uh, you know, help this homeless food shelter. But guess what? These places need money. <laughs> they need money to buy the resources, to buy the food, to build the shelter, uh, to provide housing. And so, unfortunately, when you're in this quadrant, you typically don't get to make the impact that you want. So here's what, here's what I'm telling you today. Number one, you gotta understand what quadrant you're in. That's number one, you gotta be aware. Most people are just not even aware. It's number one, you gotta be aware. Number two, if you got both feet planted in this quadrant, you have to start to take the steps to move one foot into the quadrant on this side. We're not gonna talk about business ownership, but I can tell you that everybody can get involved in the I quadrant. Don't matter your age, your race, your sex, everyone can get involved in this quadrant because uh, all you need to have is a couple dollars to open an online trading account and then you can invest in the people who were really good at building this. I like to tell people, do you think you can personally build a better social network than Facebook? Do you think you can personally build a better system of search engine optimization than Google? Do you personally think you can build a better hamburger system than McDonald's? If the answer is no, this quadrant is the great equalizer because you can now come along and invest with the people you just said you couldn't build a better system than them. And you don't think anybody else can build a better delivery system of hamburgers and search engine optimization or social media or like Tesla, at least for the moment, build a better electric car. This is your opportunity to say, don't try to worry about competing with them and figuring out how can you build your next McDonald's. How about you just come along and partner with McDonald's, partner with Tesla, partner with Facebook. And the best way you can do that is by buying some shares or buying some options that help you control the shares of how to get involved with those companies. So if you don't know how to do that, I recommend checking out one of our free webinars, how to trade stocks uh, for beginners or stock market secrets, or checking out how to trade options so you can learn how to get one foot out of the E quadrant, hopefully soon, both feet, but at least one foot so that you have some other options in your life to offset the cons of having both feet planted in the employee quadrant. That's what I want you leaving thinking about today.